Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Genesis chapter 6 verse 7 as well as Isaiah chapter 4 verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for this word Lord Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for being our covering. Thank you for being our strength. You are everything that we need Lord Jesus. We trust and we put our hope in you. You are our covering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Genesis chapter 6, verse 7. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. And this is... Um, just before the flood, right? When God had gotten, um, was telling Noah to, you know, create the ark and he was going to destroy the world by a flood, right? And this reveals his heart towards the ways of man, right? Um, towards the evilness of, of his ways at that time, the iniquity that was in the land and how man had strayed so far from him, right? And it says, uh, and so the Lord said, I will blot man out man whom I have created from the face of the land. He, I mean, he's going to completely erase man away, right, from the land. And so Noah was the only one left. It says man and animals, and creeping things and birds of the heavens where I am sorry that I have made them. This this seems like it grieved God's heart to have made them, right? Because they were not going in the way of God. They they had been corrupted and and they were not following after God anymore. No longer was there the garden, right? No longer was there this peaceful place where God could come and walk in the cool of the day. But now instead there was man and there was iniquity and there was corruption in the land, right? And And they were going farther and farther away from God. But Noah was not like that. Noah found favor in God's sight. And so this is conflated today with Isaiah chapter 4, verse 6. It says, There will be a booth for shade by day from the heat and for refuge and a shelter from the storm and rain. Right? Well, this is talking about the thousand year reign and you know it this these scripture conflations are revealing the heart of God right it says there will be a booth for shade by day from the heat right why because he doesn't want them to feel any more distress right after having come through the tribulation after having um come through um everything that that they had come through exile um bondage whatever they had gone through they they were now going to find full refuge right they he he would shade them from the heat he would make a place for them from the heat and for refuge and a shelter from the storm and rain god is a keeper right he is he is a god who shades us who who gives us refuge in the storm he's not going to let the storm pass over and harm the ones who are seeking after him who have humbled themselves and pray and saw his face and and he has forgiven them of their sins and cleansed their land he's not going to just allow the storm to rain on them he's going to give them a booth he's going to give them a shelter he's going to shade them from the heat right because that is how God is God is a just God he is going to give you what is due to you and that just reveals the heart of God right he he could just throw it all down the drain but that's not the kind of God he is he's a vindicator he is he is prudent he keeps good records he makes sure he knows that that each child gets what is coming to them 
Christ is our covering. He is that booth. He is that shade from the heat. He is that refuge and that shelter from the storm. And because we have Christ, we have that covering, right? And God doesn't see our sins. God isn't grieved to have made us, even if we're not perfect. Why? Because we're found in him. We are perfect as he is perfect. So as he is perfect, if we abide in him, then we are perfect, right? We following after the spirit. We don't have to walk in condemnation because we follow the spirit and and we are we are shaded by Christ Jesus we are covered we have shelter we have refuge from the storm and the rain right and and so that that first passage that really and truly you know helps us to see the heart of God the grief that he felt because of the iniquity because of the corruption the things that were happening to um the world and the people um you could feel his heart right in his grief and his sadness for that but in the other scripture you can feel his love and his covering and his shelter he is a good God. He is a God who cares about your specific situation. He sees the things that you have done for him. He sees your, your going after him and, and trying to be humble and seek after him and, and making time for devotion and prayer and intercession. He sees those things and he is pleased by those things when they come from right motives and come from following the spirit of the Lord, right? And he also sees any evil that is being done in the land and each will be vindicated, right? Each will get their just due. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Lord Jesus, bless your children. Help them to have understanding and wisdom in this matter, Lord God. Help us to be fully and truly revealed, um, reveal the the booth to us reveal the shade to us reveal your refuge to us your rewards to us reveal these things to us lord god we pray that we never go back to that grief state the 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 sin state that grieves your heart lord god help us to stay going hard after you in jesus name we pray amen all right you guys if there's anybody out there who would like to receive jesus as your savior and lord Go ahead and pray this prayer with me, but more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God. Forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me, Jesus. Sit on the throne of my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he's going to show you the way. He's going to lead you in right paths. The Holy Spirit is a guide and you can learn how to hear better from the Holy Spirit by just opening up your word, getting quiet, asking him questions and learning to wait on him. He has a still small voice most of the time and he will lead you in the right paths. Amen. All right. Don't forget to go out and find a church home, be baptized, um, be around other believers so that you can stay sharp in the word of God these are things that Christ Jesus said for us not to forsake. So we need to not forsake them. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you as children his peace. Take care.